Greetings loyal subscribers and honoured guests. Welcome to the 12th and final episode in this season of Cover Tape Chaos. Sorry for the lateness of this episode, that was caused by me getting a new PC and switching over from Sony Movie Studio to Adobe Premiere Elements as my editor of choice. I had to spend a bit of time setting up my new system and then learning how to use the software. To make up for it though, we have a bumper episode this time around. Power Pack 12 was absolutely crammed with goodies, no less than 6 items of software for us to enjoy. So let's get stuck in and see exactly what is in store for us. The first item this issue is a full game by the name of Spin Dizzy. In it, you can take control of Gerald, the gyroscopically environmental reconnaissance and land mapping device, who takes the shape of a spinning top, disc or sphere depending on your preference. It's up to you to carefully guide Gerald around 429 challenging screens and map the entire area. You're given a very limited amount of time to do so, but collecting gems that are scattered all over the game world will increase your time limit. Spin Dizzy is an incredibly challenging game, that's for sure. The isometric perspective and the twitchiness of the controls ensure that you will go flying off the world quite frequently, losing valuable seconds from your timer as a result. The layout of the world also makes it quite hard to navigate, with there being frequent ramps and pitfalls. For the steeper ramps, you will need to take quite a bit of a run-up in order to make it to the top, but overdo your speed and you're likely to go flying off the other side. This means that the game can be quite frustrating, but it's also pretty good fun to play. There's certainly plenty of game in there, and the fact that you can set off in one of four different directions from the starting point means that you can explore for quite a while. Just don't expect to complete it anytime soon. The name of the next item on the tape is actually a little misleading. Instead of being a demo for the 3D construction kit, it's actually the demo game that you can play to see what's possible with the kit. The early 3D games like Driller and Total Eclipse were incredibly impressive when they were released, and scored quite highly in the magazines, so the developers eventually released the engine to the public so that they could make their own 3D games in a similar style. It's fair to say that 3D games have moved on a lot since the C64 days however, so what was once amazing to behold is now rather ugly and incredibly sluggish. It's still an impressive display of coding though considering that the average text message on your mobile probably takes up more memory than the entire C64. Next up is something a little unusual for a power pack, a public domain demo that was created especially for Commodore format to go along with an article on the demo scene that was inside the magazine. This demo is nothing all that amazing technically to be honest, and it does come across as a huge advert to boot. Still, it does feature some nice music and visuals, so it's an entertaining enough distraction for a minute or two. After that is a demo of a game called PP Hammer. I couldn't make much progress in this because I couldn't work out how to damage the enemy at the bottom of the ladder. Using my pneumatic weapon on him didn't appear to have any effect at all, so I was soon out of lives. Once my life counter did reach zero, the game apparently glitched out and I was un unable to restart it, so not a great first impression of this game really. The penultimate demo this issue is of the Amiga classic Speedball 2. This is a brutally violent futuristic sport which plays like a combination of American football and pinball. There are all sorts of added elements on the pitch besides the standard goals. Stars that can be lit up for bonus points, a loop to throw the ball around, and a bumper in the middle of the arena to bounce the ball off of and add a little extra spice. The game is quite nice and playable on the C64, but when all is said and done it's still a pale imitation of the 16-bit version. It lacks the distinctive art style of the Amiga original, and the iconic speech samples are also missing. The C64 is definitely possible as some decent speech, especially by 1991, so it's a shame that the shout of ice cream, ice cream, when a player gets injured isn't there. So it's not terrible, but I would still rather be playing it on the Amiga to be honest. Lastly, we have a demo of Rodland. This game works incredibly well on the C64, with great graphics, animation, and incredibly responsive controls. If you haven't heard of the game before, it's a cutesy single screen action platformer for one or two players, much like the classic Bubble Bubble. In it, you control either a boy or girl fairy named Tam or Rit, and you bash various cute baddies over the head repeatedly with your rods until they die. Slain baddies will drop some kind of power up from missiles, bouncing balls and various other instruments of death. 
You don't want to just slay everything on sight though. Instead you want to try and leave one or two enemies alive while you go around the stage and collect all the flowers. If you manage to do so then the game goes into a bonus mode where the enemies change form and drop one of the letters of the word extra when killed. Collect all of the letters and you will earn an obscene amount of bonus points. As I said already, the C64 version of Rodland is an excellent port, but this demo version does have a couple of problems. Firstly, no sound whatsoever. Secondly, it's incredibly brief. No sooner have you started to enjoy the game than the five stages are over. You can play the demo again as much as you like, but it will still only take you a couple of minutes to breeze through it each time. Still, I do remember wanting to play the full version of this game back in the day, but for some reason I never did that end up buying it. I think because I could play through the entire thing on a friend's Amiga by that point. Not a bad effort overall. So that brings Season 1 to a close then. Don't worry, Cover Tape Chaos will be back in the new year. Before then, I have a new project that I will be announcing in the not too distant future, so keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, take care. Thank you.